You're watching the news on the hour to you from the Anglican Cable Network Nigeria, ACNN. I am Nzubechi Frank. You are welcome. The forthcoming general elections have continued to raise dust, with some saying that the general elections will not hold, while some have predicted different things such as war, rigging of the elections result, amongst other things. Speaking in an interview with ACNN News correspondent Nwane Ogechuku in Abuja is the Right Reverend James Oruori, the Bishop of Obwea Diocese, who called on all citizens of the country not to allow the evil predictions of the enemies of the country to take hold of them because Nigeria belongs to all citizens and not to some selected few. But they should instead go get their voter cards and go out en masse to vote the candidate of their choice and make sure that their votes count. This is our country. People might have other places to run to, but it would be a shameful thing for people to run out of their country because of some few people who are manipulating the system. So my message to the people of this country is that let's believe God afresh. Let us obey him. Let us also do what God would want us to do. At the time of election, every person is expected to vote and ensure that his vote counts. And when once we have done that, then we continue to look on to him to fulfill his word. His word is settled in heaven. No man can change his word. And so it is expected that every Christian must vote. Every Christian must have his voters register cards. Every Christian must also trust God and believe God and must be found doing what God would want us to do. That is the only way we can win this election and have peace in Nigeria. Bishop Oruori for the called on Christians to be faithful to God and shun every form of falsehood lifestyle that is being exhibited by some Christians today, stressing that they, sh they ought to stand in the gap and intercede for Nigeria, just as Abraham did for the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Christians should become more faithful to God. Christians must not just be calling God and be like criminals. Then it will provoke God to bring wrath upon his own children. But if Christians are faithful, Christians are looking unto God, Christians are steadfast, then we can see the manifestation of the finger of God. It took Abraham to stand to be the known intercessor. Would you destroy Sodom and Gomorrah if there are 50 righteous? In Nigeria, we have more than 50 righteous. And so if Christians are holding God by his word, he will fulfill his word. So our message to Christians in Nigeria is that let us come back to the altar of God. We must be faithful. We must do what we're supposed to do. And we must not rest. The Bible says we must pray without ceasing. Luke chapter 18 verse 1. Praying in all ramifications. The way we live in our home must be in harmony with the word of God now. What we impart to our children must be in harmony with the word of God now. What the politician would expect us to do and what we would do must be in harmony with the word of God now. When once we do that, we see the glory of God. We see the power of God moving. And I can tell you, God is going to manifest his glory. Anyone that is thinking that he's going to use his arm of flesh to win this election will be put to shame. So we advocate that Christians should come back to the altar of God. Meanwhile, former head of state, General Yakubu Gowan, has called on the standard bearers of the All Progressive Congress, APC, and the People's Democratic Party, PDP, President Mohamed Buhari, and former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, and other presidential candidates of other parties to accept the result of the 2019 presidential poll in good faith. The former military leader spoke with reporters after the opening of an exhibition in honor of an emeritus professor of medicine, Oladipo Akinkumbe, held at the University College Hospital, UCH Ibadan. Gowan advised the political gladiators to imbibe the spirit which made former President Goodluck Jonathan to concede defeat after the 2015 presidential pool to Buhari. 
The protest by some youths for the People's Democratic Party PDP to drop Mr. Peter Obi as its vice presidential candidate has been described as suspicious and diversionary. Mr. Valentine Obiem, media aide to Obi, said this in a statement in Oka. Some youths under the urges of the Northern Youth Leaders Forum met with Chief Olushego Obasanjo and urged Alahaji Atiku Abubakar to reconsider the choice of Obi or risk losing their support. OBM, in his state, said it was a case of inventing problems where none existed, adding that the announcement of OB as Atiku's running mate elicited widespread approval and jubilation because it was adjured as the best by most Nigerians. He described OB as humble, hardworking, knowledgeable, detravelized Nigerian with in depth knowledge about the economy and conversant with the myriad of problems of the country. According to opinion, any person truthful to himself will agree that never in the history of Nigeria did naming of running mates elicited comparable reactions. Obiyem wondered why such protests should hold on in Ota and what the intentions of those behind it were. He said they would not be distracted with such antics but remained focused on efforts to prefer solutions to national economic challenges. Ahead of the 2019 general elections, the Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Abubakar III, has lamented that things are not okay in Nigeria. The monarch said the situation of insecurity, kidnapping and killings everywhere was an indication that everything was not okay in the country. He made the remark at a one-day dialogue on democratic stability and national security organized by the Alumni Association of the National Institution, Abuaka stressed that as the 2019 election drew closer, things will get worse because politicians will take advantage of the situation. He also lamented that youths were killing themselves due to lack of education and employment. We shall now go on a short commercial break. News on the hour continues in a moment. Please stay with us. Did you know Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost? Did you know ACNN reaches out to all African, European and Asian countries? Did you know ACNN produces programs that provide Bible-based solutions to your everyday need? Would you consider partnering with us in order to help us reach out to more souls? Then become a part of ACNN TV Kingdom Investment Partnership. You can be a monthly or a yearly partner. To subscribe, make your partnership payment into this Zenith Bank account. Account name, Prada Communications Limited. Account number, 10132267532. For more details and confirmation of your Akip subscription, please call plus 234-703-265654. You can also reach us via email. We can reach the world with the undiluted Word of God. You are welcome back and thanks for staying tuned. For more on our top stories, please visit our website at acnntv.com or youtube.com forward slash acnntv. To be up to date with our news and other programs, download the ACNN app for Android from Google Play Store. And for our witness reports, please send your video clips of pictures to news at acnntv.com or acnnnigeria at gmail.com. The Bishop of Anglican Diocese of Akoko Edo, the Right Reverend Jolie Oyekwin, has called on the church in Nigeria to remove every denominational barrier that has been standing against the unity of the Church of Christ in the country. According to him, the church is meant to deliver the country from every stronghold that has held the country from progressing 
adding that the church cannot achieve this without uniting together. Bishop Oyekme made this call while speaking in an interview in Niger State. The bishop called on the church in Nigeria to imitate the church in South Africa that united together and went into politics and liberated the country, stressing that Nigeria can only move forward when the church come together, unite themselves and be actively involved in politics. If the church in Nigeria come together and we have one voice, like it was in South Africa, we know how the church led the land. You hear of Bishop Desmond Tutu. They were Christians, they were leaders. They went into politics and took the stage. That is exactly how the church in Nigeria can deliver us if we take the stage and we must be determined to do so. Nobody should intimidate us. We have learned that God is our refuge. He will not allow us to be defeated. Therefore, this is a clarion call on all Christians to let us for once come together and speak with one voice. For sure, we will deliver the land from destruction and from impending danger. The immediate past governor of Ekiti State, Ayodele Fayoshe, has been granted the sum of 50 million Naira bill. His bail application was granted during his second appearance before the federal high court sitting in Ikoi, Lagos. Fayoshe was arraigned before Justice Mojushola Olato Rugun by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, on charges of corruption. The judge also asked him to provide a charity who must have landed property in Lagos. The guarantor is also required to have three-year tax clearance in Lagos. Fayoshe is facing an 11-count charge bordering on receiving illegal monies to fund his 2014 governorship campaign in Akiti State, among other alleg allegations of benefiting from proceeds of money laundry. And now to foreign news. Thousands of migrants from Central America are crossing Mexico from south to north in the hope of reaching the United States. Many of them are parents with young children seeking a better life away from the violence and lack of opportunities in, in their home countries. The size of the group has steadily grown from about 1,000 to more than 7,000. According to a United Nations estimate, the group left the crime-ridden city of San Pedro Sula in Honduras on October 13th. From there, the migrants walked to Nueva Octopegu from where they crossed into Guatemala. Their aim is to reach the United States where they say they want to start a new life away from the criminal gangs which control parts of Honduras. But U.S. President Donald Trump, who campaigned on a promise to curb illegal migration, to USA said he would not let the caravan cross into the US. One of the migrants held up a sign reading most of them are from Honduras and some had tied Honduran flags to their backpacks as they got ready to cross into Mexico. The Mexican authorities had previously said that they would stop those who did not have passport or the correct visas. More than 20 people were hot some seriously injured when an escalator ran out of control at a Rome metro station. Many of those injured were fans of the visiting Russian football team CSK Moscow. The accident occurred before CSK Moscow's match with Roma in the group stages of the Champions League and from reports gathered, three people were seriously injured while surgeons operated on a man in his 30s in the hope of saving his foot. According to a police spokesman, the Russian fans had been singing and jumping before the escalator gave way and a group of CSK fans were going down into the station at the moment the escalator collapsed, adding that most of the injured were CSK fans. However, some officials had conducted an investigation into what happened and discovered that the city's transport infrastructure is notoriously chaotic, but local transport authorities said maintenance checks on the station's escalators were carried out on a monthly basis.
So that's it on this edition of the News on the Hour. We want to thank you for watching. I am Zubechi Frank.